coming from all this and with 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 these sort of anxieties that's passed inside you that, that as you say r- recur when your when your career went uh one would say what su- supernova when mm. uh, the era of the usual suspects mm. when you are you are undeniably mm. uh at this point one of the most successful actors of, of mm. your generation does that all go away does that function does that kind of success function as a as a reassurance that takes worries away or do they return in a different form well, that's another thing I talk about in the thing is about what success is and what failure is and what fame is. I think the pursuit of fame in and of itself is a very hollow ambition. Success doesn't hang around too long. The idea that you have a success and it buries deep inside yourself and you say, OK, now now I know what <laughs> everything is. And this because that, that's the dream, right? That yeah. is the dream. Yeah. And um, the truth about it is that um, you know, it's a bit like people who climb mountains. They they spend an awful lot of time going up, but they don't spend an awful lot of time at the top. <laughs> they plant the flag and then it's time to come down again. So to climb another bigger mountain. Um, I think that anything I've really learned in life has been from failure. And I, I, I'm not saying that in a kind of, um, you know, I don't want to underestimate that, that, that success in and of itself is a, a very nice feeling. Um, but failure is something that you have to contend with because it forces you to better yourself in a way. Um, I've seen people in Hollywood who've had success and they cling on to it, you know, like a drowning man onto a rock and they'll do mm. anything to keep it. And yet at the time, at the same time, the river is getting more and more turbulent and they have to make a decision. Is it me or... You know, do, do I let go of this? Because then that becomes your identity. And one of the things that I reflected on when I lived in Hollywood was the notion of identity. Like, who am I now? I'm somebody else now. But are they seeing who I am inside? And the answer was no. Mm. Um, I, I, I've sat with actors saying, oh, I have to check the, um, the Friday night takings. And depending on that phone call, if the movie was going to be a success or a failure, their next weeks and months could be a bit of a nightmare. Um, they said they say that in Hollywood you have three strikes and you're out. Um, they put money into the first one, the second one, but they're not going to go into the fourth one if the three movies have, uh, you know, lost money. So it's very much about material success and the idea of fame itself. I've seen it change people's identity and I never wanted to uh, lose who I was to something that was so ephemeral. That's not to say I'm not grateful for it. First of all, I never expected it would happen. And secondly, as soon as that picture got a standing, 10 minutes standing ovation in, um, in Cannes, it wasn't me that changed. It was the people around me. Mm-hmm. Tell, tell me a bit. That's fascinating. What, what do you mean by that? You mean you well, mean you mean the, the the people for whom you were an industry, or you mean the people of whom you are you associated with on a on a personal everybody, level? Everybody, everybody. Because um, I talk about this in the show too, um, um, and I remember having a, a conversation with Richard Wharton, the actor, about this, and he said, you know, that fame was like being locked inside a box with people banging on it twenty four hours a day, and he said that. Uh, he always thought that fame would be the answer Mm -hmm. to everything that ailed him, Uh, all his emotional problems, uh, that once you achieve that kind of level of being known, that everything was going to be okay from then on. But then he realized that it didn't change anything inside him, but it changed so much in people around him. So they started to react differently to him. So that was a crisis of identity for him and it shattered, uh, y- you know, his own sense of self, his own se- s- uh, sense of self-worth. And you can see that happen again and again. It's not just about becoming famous for, you know, being on an island or something and, you know, being having a great body and stuff. It's not that. It's about how your identity, the person you've known up to that moment, is suddenly different. And that throws people into crisis. And you have to be pretty resilient and pretty strong to resist it because it is like the Metastophelian myth for many people to surrender your soul for this. 
and I've been close enough to the really huge actors to see on a daily basis how they interact with this, you know, this idea that most people have been denied, which is this idea of world fame. Mm. And they can't go down the road to have a coffee because there's 25 people following them with cameras and they've got their kids in the back and that kind of thing. And is there a secret to it? Is there a way it can be done? Is there anyone who's got that right? Or is it, inevit is it inevitably just the, the sacrifice that is made to be working at that level? Yes, obviously there are people who have managed to do that and do it uh, beautifully. And I look to those people um, just as an ordinary person reading the paper and I'm inspired by them because, and I admire it because really it's, there's nothing in Hollywood that doesn't apply to all of us. Everybody looks to this uh, mythologized place called Hollywood and say, oh, that's in Hollywood, that happens. There's nothing happens in Hollywood that doesn't happen in every office all over the world <laughs> and in every street. And if you live in a village in Exeter or somewhere, uh, every time you step outside the door to go to the village shop, you get a taste of what these people experience every day. The guy comes out and you think, oh, no, not this guy. I have to stand and talk. <laughs> I just want to get my bottle of milk and go home. So it makes the world a tiny village of a couple of streets. But how you hold on to it has to do with how you view yourself, your own self-worth, your own self-value and not to be swayed by anything else. But that's a lesson that's as true for life as it is for the business that I work in. Your identity is very precious. And just like 20 years ago, we thought that privacy was something that would never disappear. Now privacy is something that's absolutely gone. Mm. And identity is the next thing that's up for, um, you know, for, uh, for some kind of struggle. Holding on to who you are, believing in it. And realizing that there's really nothing, you know, in this crazy idea of, of a career in Hollywood or anything. Because I was there and I saw it. And it's, um, to be absolutely honest, without denigrating the people who live there, because most of the people I, I, I knew there were just hardworking people who had families mm -hmm. and got up every morning at seven o'clock and went to work and worried about whether the job was going to last or technology would put them out of a job or whatever. But most of the people there um, live reasonably ordinary life, but they work in a factory called Hollywood, which produces a product called film. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. It is utterly about the profit made off the product and anything they can to sell that will do. That's, that's how they create film stars. Yeah. They create the brand. Yeah. 